If you feel like your website scares customers off before they have a chance to understand what you've built, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. The design of both your marketing website and your SaaS application can make or break your startup. But when you're just starting out, you usually don't have the capital to hire a professional designer. So a lot of us founders handle design ourselves and the results can be hot garbage. I'm not a designer. I don't claim to be a designer. So in today's video, I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna bring on Tracy Osborne, who does have real design shops. She's even written a book about how to be a better designer. And she's here to help you learn about some critical design blunders that you can easily avoid. Over to you, Tracy. Thanks, Rob. With over two decades of experience as a visual and user experience designer and having reviewed hundreds of SaaS websites in my role as program director at TinySeed, I have seen every design mistake under the sun. Today, I'm here to tell you the top visual design mistakes I see non-designers make over and over and how to fix them. Later in the video, I'll let you know the mistake I too often see founders make even after they paid thousands for a designer to create a professional landing page. So let's get started. Let's take a look at this hypothetical startup, Sassy Sass. This startup has a pretty typical template for their landing page, and at first glance, it looks pretty okay. You know, things are, looks like they're all in the right place, not a lot of colors, looks fairly clean, but there are some big things we can change that can improve this by like a thousand percent. Let's jump down to the content. And at first glance, it looks pretty good, but you might notice that the text is a fairly light gray, and I see this a lot by non-designers and even designers because it looks very designy, it looks very clean. However, there's not enough contrast on that text, so it's easily readable. Maybe the younger set can read it, but as folks are getting older, as computers are getting farther away, when there's small text, light gray text, it's an often used but bad choice for your content. All you need to do to fix this is just look for light gray text on your page and bump up the contrast. And if you don't have a lot of experience kind of judging by eye how much contrast there is or how much contrast there should be, there's tools out there like WebAIM. So you can put in the, the color of your text and the color of your background, and it'll let you know if there is enough contrast to be readable. And a good example of this is Gather's homepage. Ignoring that gigantic, beautiful looking headline, the content underneath it is still very dark gray, but there's enough visual contrast between it and the headline to differentiate it, but it's still super readable. All right, going back to this content on our hypothetical SaaS, you know, we've bumped up the contrast on that text, but still pretty hard to read because the text is really small. It happens all the time. I see a lot of people gravitating to it, like really small text sizes, especially if they've been on the web for a while, because back in the day we were working with like eight pixel and 10 pixel fonts. But as time has gone on, people have gotten used to a larger text size. Larger text sizes are easier to read. They also look more modern. And so the quick fix here is just a look at your text sizes and bump it up a bit. If you're working in pixels, a minimum of 14 pixels in terms of size is what I would go with and probably larger. In this case, it's still pretty small, but it's bigger than it was before and is way more readable. Good example of this is Savvy Cal, and this is like great, beautiful, large text here. The Savvy Cal's website is a great example. If you are unsure about how big you can go, take a look at Savvy Cal's website. The text sizes are gloriously large and it looks really normal. It doesn't look like it's an overly large text size. So you can kind of see how far you could bump your text sizes uh, in you know that direction before it starts looking weird, which you have a lot of room to grow. And on the topic of typography, if we scroll up, we might notice now that we've increased the text size a little bit, we've increased the contrast on our text a little bit, but your readability is still not quite there because the line lengths are too long. Here, I'm specifically talking about that sub headline in that hero section, where it goes all the way from the left side to the right side of the page. When lines are that long and you kind of have to like move your head back and forth to read that sentence, it's no, people are gonna skip it. They're not gonna read it. It's super hard to read. And I see a lot of non-designers do this because they're working on templates that are full width of the page and they plunk in their text and it goes the full width of the page. Don't do that. Add a little space to the left and the right of that content shorten those line lengths and it'll vastly improve your readability. 
So what we did was added those spacers around that content in that hero. So the line lengths are significantly shorter. It's much easier to read at a glance and you know your customers will actually read that sub headline and hopefully click through into what your product is. Good example of this is the user list website. So it looks pretty similar to Sassy SaaS in terms of the headline content and the CTAs underneath it, but it's another example of showing how you can bump in the size of your content when you have these headlines at the top of your page so that the line lengths don't go too long. Moving on to my favorite one, which is white space. And by white space, I don't mean the actual color white space of the page. I mean the empty space to the page, the part of the page that isn't images, icons, or content. So looking at Sassy Sass, the white space that we have already would be a lot of the space that's in this green bar in this hero section. We're using white space essentially to shorten those line lengths in that previous section. But white space is a powerful tool we can use to make the content content on your website more readable, make it easier for people to go through it because everything's not gonna be crammed up together. So if we add even more white space to this hero section on Sassy Sass, we added more space at the top and the bottom of this hero section, you can see that the eye is more easily drawn into that headline. It goes directly there because it's that's the, the, the thing in the middle and there's nothing competing with it around it. We can use white space to kind of draw the eye through the page from that headline into the content without having all these elements crammed together and competing with each other. If we jump down to the content, we can see there's a lot more opportunities to add white space and we can use that white space to make this page feel cleaner, more modern and easier to use. So if we add some spacing between those columns, we add spacing between the pieces of content. So between those feature columns and that sub headline, between the he sub headline and the content below it, between that content and the section and where that image is, all of those things are adding more white space to the page, but it's also making the page easier on the eyes. It's less complicated. There's less things competing for attention. It's easier for the eye to go between all these sections without being like, wait, where am I going next? White space is also something that makes a website feel more modern and more trustworthy. The websites we used back in the 90s were pretty crammed together, pretty close. And as the internet has been moving towards more modern designs, white space has been added and is now expected by consumers as a sign of a trustworthy product. A good example of this is the Scraping Bee website. And if you're looking at this website, you know, there is an illustration, there's a headline, a subheadline, and a CTA, uh, but the negative space, the white space, um, there's a lot of it. There's a lot around that illustration. There's a lot below that, that content. And if you're worried that people aren't gonna scroll because there's a giant, you know, empty space there, Scraping Bee is doing a cool thing here by having that diagonal color line going through. It kind of draws the eye down into the next section. And if you jump into that next section, you can see there's still a lot of beautiful white space here. I mean, the space between that hero section and that first content section is actually pretty darn big. It's like 200 pixels, but this web page looks cohesive. It looks easy to use. It doesn't look out of whack. The amount of white space here is appropriate. And it's something that you should be trying to achieve in your own designs. I know in this video, we're focusing a lot on content, but that's because the content is a really important part of your page. And there's a lot of mistakes being made when you're designing your web page visually and trying to, you know, fussing with how it looks, but you're not really looking at the content itself. And so in addition to making sure your content is easy to read with high contrast, making sure it's easy to read with uh, larger text sizes and shortening those line lengths and adding that white space around it because it's not crammed up with, it, with everything. We also want to look at the content itself and see if there's any opportunities to change what we've written to make it more compelling. So taking a look at this headline, it's very typical for a, you know, a bigger you know, startup to start out with. They start with a headline that says what this startup is. It is a data collection service, but that's not compelling. No one wants to sign up for that. Why would you want to sign up for that? What does that do for the consumer? When you're working on a design, working on your landing page as a non-designer, make sure you're nitpicking your content and rewriting those headlines to make them compelling. I see this all the time, people writing very boring headlines when this is like one of the smallest changes you can do that could vastly affect your conversion in your bottom line. So Sassy Sass is a daily collection service, but that tells you nothing about what the company actually does. What it actually does is it unlocks actual insights and secures your data. Now we could probably improve this even further. This is still kind of generic, but at least it's a little bit closer to what we wanted to do, which is talk about what it does for the consumer versus what it is. 
And this is a lot more compelling than just saying it's a data collection service because it tells people about why they might wanna sign up for it. So we can take this work that we're doing on these headlines and also apply it to our content. So if we scroll down, we look at this features area, you know, there's a lot of words for each of these sections. It is a chunk of text and no one wants to read a giant chunk of text, but they will read something that's shorter, snappy, has strategic bolding. Basically, you wanna make sure the content you have is easily read for people who are scrolling fast on your website. Maybe they're just, you know, reading things at a glance. And when they see giant chunks of text like this, they're just gonna skip it. So let's take these chunks of text and we'll split them up. So a good rule of thumb for paragraph, you know, writing your paragraphs is to keep them to two to three sentences max per paragraph, but that shorter is always Always better. So even if you can short it further than two to three sentences, that's great. So for these chunks of text, we A, shorten them, B, we broke them into separate paragraphs. And we also added some bolding. So the important words in the sentence will pop out to people who are just scrolling through quickly on the web page. This makes it a lot more compelling and increases the chances that someone, as they're like going through your website super quickly, they'll catch on something that looks interesting to them and they'll start reading further. Whereas a giant book of text, the person's just gonna skip it. Zooming back out, we've updated this features area, but now we have that chunk of text below to contend with. And this is what you're probably gonna do for your entire website going through piece of content by piece of content and shorten up. And I mean every piece of content, everything. So, you know, a lot of people on their about page write their life story. Cut that down. Make that short. Make it snappy. Use any opportunity you can to shorten and snappify your content so it's easier to read and increases the chance that people are actually going to read it and then click through to being a customer. So even in this section below, you know, we need a little bit more words here, but we can break that giant paragraph up into three different paragraphs. We can still use some of that strategic bolding for those important parts and make it way easier for people who are skimming the page to see the important parts and read what you're doing. And a good example of this is Cloud Forecast website. Their headline is excellent. It references something that you would know if you're an AWS customer. It's funny, it's short, it's easy to understand, it's super compelling. So this is a good example of the kind of things you can do with your headlines to make your startup more compelling to the customers you're working with simply by changing the text on your headlines. I've got one more tip for you, but before that, I wanna let you know about MicroConf Remote. It's a two-day online conference where we bring in outside experts to help you level up your skills. This event will be focused on early stage marketing and the talks include topics like the bootstrapped startup marketing checklist, hiring a copywriter that doesn't suck, building a sustainable customer acquisition funnel, and how to increase conversions and reduce churn in your email marketing. Additionally, we'll have some founder by founder sessions where you can meet founders who are tackling the same problems as you are. The two-day event kicks off on November 1st. To learn more and to get your ticket, head to microconfremote.com. Last but not least, a thing I see a lot is founders and non-designers making a lot of work on their homepage and their landing pages and making sure they look good, but not translating any of that, any of the changes they made into the app itself. So Sassy Sass, we've been working on the headlines. We've been working on the content. We already have a style of this website um, pretty defined. We have a lot of greens. We have certain fonts we use. But if we click through to the app itself, the Sassy Sass app looks good. It's also using a really good looking template. It looks very modern and clean, but it looks nothing like that homepage. And this is an easy fix. All you need to do when you have, uh, you know, any changes you make to your landing page in terms of those fonts and the way that things look, you just wanna make sure that you flex those things on your app itself. So Sassy Sass here still looks the same as before. It's still using a good looking template, but it brought in those greens, it brought in those fonts. It created a um, design language that matches what we see on that landing page. When your app looks different than your landing page, it creates this disconnect that can make customers feel like they're on a different service, that something went wrong and they went to the wrong place. So when you're making these changes or you're trying out a new template or doing anything on the front end of your website, make sure that the customer facing pages also have the same design language. And that includes fonts, colors, sometimes it can be spacing, it could be the way that you're using your lines, just make sure they look like they're a part of the same brand. That wraps up some of the key user interface design tips for non-designers. If you're building a SaaS product, make sure to avoid critical mistakes that could sink your startup. Check out this next video to learn what pitfalls to watch out for when launching your SaaS business. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.